Hello, welcome back to the 365 Shed for another What's New in Microsoft 365 and Teams for October 2023. Let's see what we've got. We have updates from OneDrive, Outlook, SharePoint, Teams, Viva, and a couple from around Microsoft 365. Make sure you go and check out the blog. I just cover the main updates in the video to keep it nice and short. But there's over 80 updates for you to go read over there. So go and check that out. Uh, look in the notes and you'll see a link over there. So, folks, let's get started. So we're going to kick off with OneDrive. First one is add individual file shortcuts to OneDrive, Web, and uh, SharePoint. So you might know, folks, that you can go to... Uh, SharePoint, for example, and you can create a, a shortcut there. And you, you go there, create a shortcut, and then paste in the address. This is basically pushing it from the other way. So an, ex an example on the screen here. So we've got a file. We've uh, selected it. The contextual uh, menu there. So you can see there we talk about the context menu. We get this menu because we have clicked this little tick box there. Uh, and we then get the option to add it to My Files in uh, your OneDrive. Or maybe you want to push it to a shared area because you found a file that would be really useful for your colleagues and you can push it into, I don't know, say a, a, an area where you've got guidance for onboarding new people. Okay, so the default name of the shortcuts uh, will be the same name as the file. But if we just look down here, you can see that, da -da, you can see that it's got, a, it's got the name of the file. Plus, it's added URL on the end. So hopefully, oh, and it's got this little arrow telling you that it's going somewhere else. So it's a fingers crossed that people at a glance can see uh, that, that, that it's a link. So this comes up a lot in the workplace. People say, well, you've, you've shared a link to my file in the so-and-so place. I don't want them to see it. Now, of course, the, the, the file permissions are in the destination. You know, they're not granted by where, where, the, um, where the link is created. So all the rights or permissions, anything, whatever you've got to set on that uh, document where it lives, that'll be respected. So nothing, nothing's granted by, uh, by creating the link. Uh, hopefully you're getting the hang of that in Microsoft 365. That applies uh, across the board. So folks, that's due early to late November this year. Okay, sticking with OneDrive, access uh, Microsoft lists, Power BI, loop, whiteboard content in OneDrive on the web. So this is a banner that I've seen in the workplace now um, in a large, uh, a large organization. Um, so all your work in one place. So if I go to recent, home, shared favorites, then that, that content, so from list, Power BI, loop, um, uh, and whiteboard will start showing up there. So I think this is, um, it's been a bit of a theme lately, hasn't there, with big improvements to OneDrive. And OneDrive being your gateway to files that you've got anything to do with anywhere across Microsoft 365. So you, you, you've seen um, updates for, you, for files to do with meetings, uh, files by person in, in, in the past, in the recent past. So here's a little example of how OneDrive is just becoming just that one window to every file type thing that you do across 365. And that, folks, is due early to late November this year. Okay, the last one for OneDrive. Offline mode in OneDrive for the web. So you're going to see this new bar across the top, or this new entry on the bar, make available offline. Um, it's going to be enabled by default unless your organization turns it off. It means that you can then view these files in, in, in OneDrive when you're offline, uh, in the, the progressive web app with PWA, or in Teams when you're offline. So, of course, you can have this in when you go to File Explorer, if you've got the um, the, the, the OneDrive app installed on your, on your machine, it's in sync clients, you'll see that. But some people just prefer the, the web app, and they want to see their files in, in the web app. Maybe more useful in, in, in Teams, I don't know. Um, anyway, so one of the, well, I think one of the big side effects of this is the fact that some of the work that would normally have happened when you click on a file um, in, in, in the browser, it, it goes off to it, does it in the, um, in the cloud. Some of that work is now gonna start happening on your machine. So I think the, one of the biggest benefits of this is actually it's meant to be faster and a smoother, better experience whenever you use OneDrive. So even if you don't use the offline mode, I bet you'll see uh, benefits from this feature. Folks, that is due early to late November. So 
lots going on in November for OneDrive. Okay, let's have a look now at Outlook. Really like this. this so I've presented this to some large groups of end users in the workplace and uh, the ability to turn on preserve declined meetings. So preserve declined meetings in Outlook. So you go into your settings, go into uh, event and invitations, you're going to see this new option here. Show declined events on your calendar. If you want a recap of how to find that, look in the notes, go over to the blog and you can see, you, you'll, you'll see the step-by-step -step, uh, instructions for how to get to there. Anyway, what it means is, these let, let's call them PDM'd meetings. So these preserved decline meetings. So PDM'd meetings, they're still going to appear in your, in your in your calendar. So they're not going to take up the space. So the time is still available. So stuff can still go in there. It's not going to show as busy. But maybe you want to keep up to date with the chat that's in there. You want to see, you want to see anything that's shared in there. Any assets from, from that? Um, any any assets from from that meeting? You want to be able to easily forward it after you've declined it. Or, or maybe you think, oh, you know what, I might change my mind, but uh, I'm just going to decline it for now. And then just change your RSVP. So change change uh, your response and then just go to the meeting. So that looks super useful, really popular uh, feature when I've shown that to people. Uh, due mid to late November this year, lots going on in November. Let's go and have a look what's going on in SharePoint. SharePoint out of the box document library templates. That's what's going on over in uh, SharePoint, folks. Let's have a look here. So we've got these templates, so the media library, invoices, and learning. So I've got to be honest, I haven't looked at them. Uh, so I don't know what you're going to get with those. So I look forward to it. It'd be good to see uh, what, you get, what you get there. Go and check it out uh, yourself. So it comes with predefined schema, formatting, views, etc. So looking forward to it. Um, so the, the, these two, the media library and invoices also come with, 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 some, uh, with some flows built in. So, uh, so what would that be? I'm guessing uh, approval type stuff, but we'll see. Uh, due mid-November for you fair SharePoint folk. Let's see what else we've got. So over to Microsoft Teams. If I seem a bit distracted uh, by just looking at that other screen, I'm using the, uh, the work version of ClipChamp to record this for the first time. Started off with a slightly irritated. I uh, I really like using Cameo in PowerPoint, and even though I turn the camera off in ClipChamp, PowerPoint then thinks that my camera's in use because ClipChamp seems to to reserve it. The, the work version of ClipChamp, uh, as far as I can see, is browser only. It's certainly the, the documentation I read. I couldn't I couldn't find a um, uh, a desktop version of of the work version of it. Um, so yeah, I'm still a bit distracted. It's because I'm I'm kind of keeping an eye on what's going on over there, uh, because I might end up having to support people in the workplace. And the best place, the best way of doing that is to use it yourself, right? So a bit of a painful start, I've got to be honest, but we're getting there. Anyway, let's get back to Teams, forward one to one and group messages in Teams chats. So let's say that you've got a group chat to talk about the XYZ project that you're working on. And then you happen to speak to, to one of your colleagues just in a chat, and then he or she or they say something in there, and you think, you know what, this would be really useful for the group. You can click on these three little dots, say you want to forward it. Nice and easy, right? And then you can add some context. So here's the forwarded message. I apologize for the, uh, the quality of these screenshots, by the way. They're from the, uh, the Microsoft uh, Message Center. And don't get me wrong, I'm super grateful they provide these, uh, but, but, but I, ju I just couldn't get a better quality one for now. So I'm super grateful that um, that they provide these uh, these images. Uh, uh, they're just not as clear as they could be on this occasion. Uh, anyway, so here's the original message. Here's the message that I've added. Just say, hey folks, I was chatting to Project Bob yesterday, and uh, I thought you might like to know this information. So. There you go, I can, get, I can get that ready to forward. And then it just appears just like a regular message. It's clear that it's been forwarded. Now, of course, you can take a screenshot, copy and paste, but this is just much nicer. One thing I do wonder is if I'm having a chat with somebody and then they're forwarding my message to a group, I wonder whether I'll see a little icon or a little note saying this message was forwarded. So I personally, from a privacy point of view, I'd like to see that, uh, but we'll see. Anyway. 
due mid January. So maybe I'm a little bit early on this. I should have saved it for uh, for another month or so. But that, folks, is due mid January. Okay, so just the previous um, update had uh, a hint of privacy issues on there. And here's another one: quickly capture content in Teams Mobile. So I'm on my uh, I'm on my mobile device. And I'm in a meeting. So here, look, I click on these three little dots and I then get this option here to take a quick capture. Click on quick capture. And now I've got that look. I've got the whatever's been shown in that meeting. I can I can now, I can now save it or I can share it to whatever I want to share it with. Um, they say no on a privacy setting set in the meeting, but I'm not sure how that's going to look. Um, I bet your organization uh, will have something to say about that setting, but uh, but we'll see. Folks, that's due early to late uh, November on iOS and Android. Okay, so Microsoft Teams workflows message extension to get actions pinned by default. A bit of a mouthful. So if you watched last month, you saw that uh, the workflows are getting a real bump, aren't they? So Power Automate, in uh, in teams um, is having a bad time and it's kind of getting absorbed by the uh, the, the, the workflows branding um, and these are going to start appearing in uh, in fact this is a screenshot for, for mine so you can see it's already here so you see the workflows here are in the um, message extension so I think what they mean by the pinned is that these ones here rather than me having to search for everything it will pin the, the actions which are appropriate to the context where I've, I've, I've opened uh, workflows. So sure, I can. I can go and find new ones. Anything I've already pinned previously will be there, but it's going to start pinning. It's going to start, you, you know, I said um, last month that people are going to start using Flow a bit more in, in, your, um, in your teams. And you're going to see more here. It's just surfacing workflows. Um, which just that have got like a friendlier vibe to them, right? Than than, than Power Automate. Uh, so, so I think you're going to see people exploring this more and more, which is I think is, I think is great. So due early to mid November. Okay, so the new Teams uh, channel experience. So you know this is this is this is um, almost certainly with you now. I just wanted to raise a couple of things. It changed a little bit from the way it, it was initially going going to be. So. When the, the new experience initially was going to have, uh, by default, it was going to have uh, new 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 um, new posts at the top and they create new at the top. But they've left it where it is at the bottom. And you got this option now here to you have to turn on the option to have them at the top. Uh, people have shown this to like it because for some reason, I mean, maybe it's what you're used to in social media. For a lot of us, it makes more sense to just at the top. You know, folks, I love Teams, but this. I uh, it being at the bottom never made sense. It's just how it was. But five and a half years into me using Microsoft Teams, they've now moved it. Anyway, so there you go. So you got some options. Have the compose uh, box at the top. Most recent uh, post at the top. You can pop it out. Um, the improved um, uh, info pane. That is that is definitely better. Um, and, that, and that is available now. And one thing. Um, that uh, duh, duh, duh. What, what, one thing that, that people um, are complaining about in a new channel experience, you can't have um, when you do uh, an announcement, you can't add a custom image to it. I'll talk about that again in, in a minute. But that new people who've gone to that new channel experience, I've heard nothing but cross people uh, about losing that functionality. Anyway. New version of Microsoft Teams is now generally available for Windows Mac. This might not be news to you. Um, I'm a little bit late uh, sharing this one. So the, the new version of Teams is now ready for use by all of us. So this means that the team, that the Microsoft think it's now ready. Um, your workplace may or may not have this slider for you to use. If you do see this slider in the top left-hand corner, uh, then try it and then flick over to, to the, the, new, uh, the new Teams. What, if you're someone who has to go between multiple tenants, so like different organizations, uh, it's so much nicer in the new teams, folks. It's just so much better. But anyway, so uh, it's somebody in, in improvements, it is fast. It definitely is faster, nice interface. That cross-tenant stuff is much better. Um, so available from the 5th of October. 
Um, so I just missed it, right, with uh, the, the last update. So it's, that's why it's been around a while. It's of note that it's going to be mandatory at the end of March. So regardless of whether your organization are temporarily blocking at the moment, I know uh, a couple of places that are, um, they, uh, you're going to be going by the end of uh, March next year anyway. So you're probably going to see organizations kind of like pulling their finger out a little bit and getting this shared. Um, time to give it another try. So I've heard people uh, say, oh, I, I tried a new Teams and it was rubbish. I couldn't do this, couldn't do that. And I asked them how long ago it is since they tried it. And it was some time. You know what, folks? It is pretty good now. If you've got the opportunity, give it a try. Okay. Microsoft Teams chat. Uh, I can't see that. Web links to open in Edge with the chat displayed alongside the web page. Okay. So all that means is if I share a, a, a chat, if I share a link with you, it will pop open in Edge. And right next to the, right next to the thing that pops open, I will see the chat from Teams that sent me to that place. So I can look at this page that, that you've sent me to, and I can still be talking to you in here. I can still be talking to you right next to the thing that I'm looking at. No doubt there'll be uh, some organizations that uh, that stop that from happening, but I think that's great. So, so one of my colleagues, uh, maybe, maybe Kirsty says, hey, Mark, check out this, this, uh, this, this, uh, this learning article. I can be reading it and commenting on it right at the same time, which I think is cool. So da, 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 what else to tell you? Do uh, in uh, early to late November. Hopefully your organization will let that happen because I think that looks great. AI powered custom backgrounds are coming to Teams channel announcements. So you know I told you previously that the new team, the, the new teams, the new teams, the new channel experience, which you can get in uh, in, you know, in Teams Classic as well, has lost the ability to have the, the background you could upload to the banner, which is just, I used it multiple times a week. Okay, well, I do a lot of evergreen updates for, for, well, for free organizations, but I use the banners in two. I would use this multiple times a week. And the fact that the, the new channels hasn't, experience hasn't got it, is just bizarre. And the amount of people who just can't understand why Microsoft would just cut that out is, uh, is, is incredible. They just, just didn't do it. I think they didn't do it because this feature that you're seeing now should have come out at the same time, but this is just, this, is, this looks like it's a little bit behind the times. Now, this is what you see at the moment, just this option here to add color. So this is a new experience, so I can add a color. This new option is appearing here. Okay, and it means that we're gonna, that uh, I can use Microsoft Designer. So in here somewhere, I can upload my own media. I just wanna upload an image. How, how, how did I take that away from you? Okay, so we've got this uh, blah, 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 new version of Teams, we've got this new AI experience. Now, at the moment, it's only available in America, right? And, and it's, 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 it's this preview experience. What about the rest of us? You've, you've taken this off us, right? And now the rest of the world who use this feature, many of us daily, now can't have it. I, I just don't even know what you're thinking. Now, that is Microsoft Designer, it's AI stuff. What about like the ability to generate images? What about if the organization is, is very um, risk adverse and they've got a problem with all this? And then I can't get this to load. I don't know how this is gonna pan out. I, I think you've just annoyed a lot of people for no reason. Anyway, so due by mid-November for Teams Classic. So we'll see whether we get that. If you're in new Teams, it's gonna be even longer. You, you know, folks, I'm a proper, 365 fanboy aren't I? I rarely, you rarely hear me be grumpy about anything, but this is just, I don't even know what to say. Yeah. So, moving on, Microsoft Viva explained. So if you're interested in Microsoft Viva or whether you find it a bit confusing, go over to the blog uh, and have a look at the article I've done there on Viva. I was lucky enough to get about 40 minutes with Leslie Crook. She's uh, a, a, an MVP. She's uh, highly respected and well known in the Viva world. Uh, and she went through all the apps with me. So if you're not sure about Microsoft Viva, go and have a look at the blog, uh, do a quick search for Viva and you'll see that blog and you'll see the big video at the bottom. I'm super grateful to her for that. Uh, go and check that out. Okay, Viva Home, the home for the Viva Suites. This had a real mixed experience in social media. A lot of people just said it's almost just like um, like a 
like an advertisement page for that Microsoft are using for, for Viva. So here we go. We come here and then there you go. It surfaces all of the, um, all of the apps. So let's not be cynical. Let's just assume it's going to be good. Uh, and it just will, will bring you, it will, it will surface all of your Viva stuff in one place. But there you go. It, it aims to provide education, um, discoverability, and navigation to the various Viva modules. I wonder whether Microsoft aren't getting the traction or that they, they want, or people people think it's a bit out of sight, out of mind. Uh, and maybe this is this is the new window, rather than the home for the Viva Suite, it's the new window to, to, to get people to, to, to engage in some of those apps a bit more. You can see them all down the, um, down the app bar there. So we'll see, we'll see how that looks. Uh, it's, it's discoverable, you can go and follow that link, uh, and hopefully you'll see it in, uh, in your tenant. Well, maybe you won't, not yet, because it's from mid-November to late December. Hopefully by the end of the year, you'll have that. What's going on around 365? The ability to create new loop components in Microsoft Whiteboard. Task list, tables, voting tables, progress trackers, and checklist loop components. So you can see here that we've, we've, we've opened up uh, loop components, and we can see here that we can add some things to our whiteboard. So the, the relationship between um, loop and um, other applications is, has been growing quite, quite a lot lately, but it seems to have quite a nice home in, in, in whiteboard. I think it was... Was it tasks I told you about last month? I think it was it was planner. It's planner, wasn't it? You could you could be you could bring planner into um, in, into your whiteboard. So we're getting more and more of that. So remember that uh, for those of you who aren't sure, this loop component. Imagine that. Imagine I've got this table here. Um, I've, I've got this in. I could have it on a word document, and I could share that word document with you. And then I think we have to open that, and then and we can get into it. Imagine if you could pluck the the, the table. Or the list, or the task, whatever it is, pluck it off the uh, off the page, and then that thing itself it is is, good, is, a, is an entity that you could that you can save and share and work on. And the great thing about these is that these can these can surface in other applications. So this could be in Word, it could be in Teams. I could send it to you on an email. It could be on the whiteboard. So you. So the great thing about this is that you can take your work to however people like to work or wherever they like to work. It might be you got some old school people. Who, who really they really do like their email so you could show an email over there maybe some people love the whiteboard they start every morning in the whiteboard or other people do they just periodically check in in teams and it could surface there as well this is a great thing about this anyway let's get back to this so there are some limitations uh, but folks you're going to see that by early november you know what go check that out so some organizations don't like loop because of the discoverability of them but if you're lucky enough to be able to use them, go and check that out. Loop components are coming to Microsoft Teams channels. So you'll know, folks, that in when you're in a chat with people, you will have seen this icon. And I've kind of like cobbled this together a little bit. I've just kind of inserted this in here. It will look something like this. So you, you'll know that in a, in a chat, you can um, you, you can add a loop component. I think you guys can work together on something there. And, and it, will, it will be... If I created it, it will be in my OneDrive. But that functionality is coming to Teams uh, channels, which I think is, is great. It's going to live straight away in that collaboration area, the SharePoint site, nice and easy to find. And the problem with them previously was if I created it, it was in my OneDrive. And, of course, I shouldn't have work documents. It depends on your policies. But generally, I shouldn't have work work stuff in my OneDrive. I need that that should be in the collaboration area, like in, in Teams or SharePoint. Anyway, that looks fab. Look at all those lovely loop components. And da, 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 is it going to be available in all types of channels, which I think is fab. And that is due by the end of the year. That is it. Well, I'm glad that's it, because according to uh, my clip champ, I've only got uh, five and a half minutes left. Uh, I didn't know that. 30 minute limit to your videos is that right i've got um i'm trying to think which um which which uh skew i've got which version is one of the business one of the business ones but half an hour limit for uh for clip champ that's not good maybe i need to change my uh, my my license anyway folks that is it some of ways to keep up to date uh twitter 
uh, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn. I, I regularly post detailed uh, detailed updates over on LinkedIn. More brief ones on Twitter X. Uh, you can check out the podcast. Sign up for the for the newsletter. No spam. Just the once a month updates. How you that the video is ready. Um, yeah, check me out. A super simple three six five on the socials. And folks, we're done. I'll catch you next month.